from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Ford Motor Company of Southern Africa has showcased new investments at its Silverson facility in Pretoria, which are over and above an initial 15.8 billion rand that the company invested in the plant. The new investments aim to improve production efficiency, customer satisfaction, and the rate of repairs per 1,000 vehicles. Malone Arnoldi visited the site. Ford has been focused on improving efficiencies at Silverton, especially since the launch of the new-gen Ford Ranger in December last year. Some of the latest investments in the facility include a 22 million rand skid cleaning facility within the paint shop, which uses a 2,500 bar pressure water system to blast paint off the facility's 760 skids. The skids are used to mount vehicle body parts for spray painting and movement throughout the assembly process. The skids can accumulate up to 8 kilograms of paint a year and would normally be cleaned on a yearly basis. With more regular cleaning, Ford ensures less dirt and contaminants in the paint shop and saves on cleaning cost. Another investment involved 20 million rand into a De Gold auto scan system, which is an artificial intelligence scanning system used for vehicle inspection. The system takes high definition full body images of every vehicle prior to being released from the Silverton plant. Silverton plant manager Tim Day explains the scanning system can detect misbuilds, damage or defects that are smaller than can consistently be found by the human eye and at quicker pace of between 30 and 50 seconds per vehicle. The Silverton plant is the only other plant of the Ford Group outside of the US to use an automated vehicle inspection system. The system has ensured quicker investigations of warranty claims and fewer costs attributed to the factory, since it can confirm that an issue was not present when the vehicle left the factory and rather happened during the shipping process or at a dealership. They elaborates on Ford's recent investments on technology and cultural improvements at Silverton. Yeah, well, I suppose we've looked at uh, many ways about how we can just take that little step further and some of, from, as you say, from the major investments of, of the transformation in trim and final. And we've got some, as uh, you've been able to see today, or we will see this afternoon, in around some of our skid cleaning facilities about how we further refine our manufacturing processes to become world class, try and reduce dirt in paint, try and reduce the safety risks associated with vehicles not moving. Uh, so we've done some changes in around that, around the technology, and it's a Ford first. It's, it's, there's a couple of other places outside South Africa and outside global, it's a bit of Ford first facility for us. Um, so we've got those, we've got still lots of uh, people aspects and, and culture is a really big one that needs to be you know, put together. Uh, one thing is put a facility in, but the, the cultural aspects, if that doesn't move along, um, you don't deliver you know, the levels of quality we need to do to be you know, equal to those, you know, the world-class facilities. So there's been a lot of investment put in in the facility we're sitting in here right now with the canteens. Uh, we, we've you know, tried to get some fencing to remove the rather rough, bigger look to a more smooth, smoother lined plant that when people go past, um, you know, they make the comments and uh, even when I go to a supermarket today, you know, people say, I want to go work for Ford because geez, it's a beautiful looking place and that gets into the hearts and minds of the people who work here and they thus want, to, want it to be good and they want it to be proud and, and, and it's a really good part of it. So from those points of view, the people aspects are, are really critical. Uh, there's been a lot of investment in around our technologies that we continue to try and push with, with AI and, and, we'll, and we'll talk later on about that. Um, you know, we, we've also had uh, how do we personalise a lot more? So you've been to the VPC centre the today, Vehicle Personalisation Centre, uh, where we can then start to standardise our work in the plant, but give some flexibility for customer variances in what they want. So there's a lot of that being put in place. Um, a lot of work being done in making sure that we can do that, but protect the customer. So there's been a lot of technology and, and, and I think squeak and rattle tracks, um, you know, the computer systems that log defects, make sure that that stuff doesn't get out of not just our plant, but also the VPC. Um, so that, that's in place. Uh, there's, a, you know, there's a lot of us, many other projects that we're busy doing to just tune it now and, and get ourselves you know, closer to being what we want, which is to be the best forward range plant in the world. The Silverton plant is capable of producing 720 vehicles a day or 200,000 vehicles a year based on three shifts a day. More than 22,200 next-gen Rangers have been exported from South Africa, while just over 7,400 units have been sold locally at the end of May. 
This model was announced as the South African Car of the Year for 2023, marking the first bucky or pickup to end the coveted title since the competition began in 1986. Ford admittedly had some issues with warranties in 2019, having recorded 34.7 repairs per 1,000 Rangers in that year, following a worse rate of 400 repairs per 1,000 vehicles between 2008 and 2010. But the company has come a long way in improving its manufacturing capability and inspections. Day confirms that the Silverton plant is now performing above the Ford global average rate of repairs per 1,000 vehicles. He discusses Ford's evolution in recent years. Well, once again, obviously it's two, two aspects, physically, uh, which is the aspects you know, that we're here to show you and you won't get the, you know, the people aspects as much, but there's been a huge journey on, on the people aspects. Uh, but the physical aspects, it, we've changed from being, uh, you know, the example of just outside where we are sitting now, where the, the, they call the skillet system, where they rise and drop. Uh, you know, 12 months, 18 months ago, sorry, now it started to move so quickly, um, where we'd have a fixed point and people would have to bend down lower to put parts on and, and, and not quite be able to see up when they have to put a clip inside when they clip the IP for the instrument panel, sorry, in properly. Um, they had to sort of get on your head to try and do it. Now the physical vehicle will lift, allow better access, so they're not doing the bending motions, they can physically see at eyeball height. Um, the aspects on the vehicle, technically as well, um, I'm not sure who worked on the loading of the, the front radiator support, or the Argo they call it. Again, you know, with that whole front missing now, as the access to that vehicle to put on brake pipes, master cylinders, boosters, harnesses, much easier and the people aren't leaning over, uh, you know, they, they got much more ergonomically well positioned, uh, which makes it you know, safer, more efficient and, and obviously once again uh, you know, reward, keeps the person themselves happy to be able to do the job. Um, on, on the housekeeping part, it was interesting, I had a set of friends come through about two weeks ago and they couldn't believe how clean the place is and that's part of the journey. You know, it's not just the new facilities but it's the respect that comes along with that new facility and that's the importance of the people coming up. Uh, you know, they know they're working on something pretty smart, the operators out there. They know it's you know, technical, technologically advanced. Uh, they used to use a lot of air tools. Um, we, back in 2009 to 13 when I was here, we had pretty well all air tools. We moved to DC tools or, or, or you know, digital tools that record torque and angle um, to today where it's, you know, we've pretty well got every air tool off this line, removed air as a, as a lesser control, so to speak, than a, than a digital tool that gives feedback to the, you know, the digitized system as we have error proofing throughout the plant that records, you know, making sure people don't hit the same joint or bolt or nut twice, but also making sure that they don't strip it and all the other things that feed back in the mechanism. So significant advancement in, in technology point of view to in, in those parts of it as we, we pull there. Um, all our equipment now is pretty well reflects what the Thailand plants are doing. So the intent there is that, uh, and we do that in everything, we look at the quality of data we have. When we have a defect, first question we ask is, does the Thai plant see it? And, and that allows us to be more efficient at actually improving because if they already see it, there's a good chance they're already working on it. So it cuts that lead time down about the investigations and we can implement the actions immediately. Uh, but if they, if they see it or we see it, first thing we do is we have a weekly meeting with them and we share that. You know, we've had this this week, watch out for it and these are the things we've done. So the technology has moved across the whole range of product, not just this site, but you know, as I say, it, it helps a lot. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.